Okay, in this video we're going to learn how to document our project. If you're following along with the tutorial from before, this is steps 20 and 21. So I'm going to go into entry level 2 and right off the bat they want us to go to the view tab and draw a section through and this doesn't really relate exactly to the main point of this uh, section of the work but I think they just want you to understand that you can draw a section view. A couple ways to get to it, right click, go to view. Here's a section view of our project. If these labels are in the way, you can zoom in, grab them. If there's a little lock icon next to it, they'll all move together, which is kind of nice. From this view, I like to do a little wall poche. This is not um, in, the, in the packet, but if you hit VV, you can go to your cut pattern. You can say all, click on the area that is right here, and you can override to solid fill and uh, black and say OK and apply and OK and then now it solid fills through like your cut which I think looks kinda cool um, if you don't like that just undo that it's not a big deal um, it just kinda depends where you're slicing through looks like I sliced through a wall here that's why it was uh, making that whole thing black let's take a look at where that landed yeah so I sliced through a wall so if I wanna just get off that I can and then I can go back to that so let's see go to view it's also in your uh, properties palette under sections you can go to the same view and once again VV to get your visibility graphics say all cut pattern override pattern solid color black okay 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 there we go you can see that we're cutting through another wall here so it's up to you how you want to show it once again if you don't like it just hit undo all right, so now they want us to make a door tag and window tag. So I'm going to go to entry level two and under annotate and say tag all. With tag all, I'm going to check door tags. And then I'm going to scroll down, check window tags also, say apply and OK. And then in level one, same thing, tag all, door tags, window tags, apply, OK. This is all great. Now we're going to move forward. So we need to make a, uh, a schedule for this. So in our properties project browser, I mean, we're going to go down to schedules, right click, say new schedule quantities at the top. And then we need to pick a door schedule. So we're going to scroll down to doors and we're going to say OK. And with the doors, they want the family and type. They want the mark. They want height, which I probably passed. Yep, height. And then they want width. In this instance, width, there we go, throw it on. And then they want it in a particular order. They want mark at the top. And then they want there to be, let's see, I would assume width and height. Yeah, width and then height, which is pretty standard. And we're gonna say okay. And then they want us to go to edit this under sorting and grouping, notice it's the same tabs as before, so we could have done this before saying OK. And they want us to sort this by mark and say OK. It's not sorted uh, numerically by type mark. And then we can go back to our uh, floor plan. Um, they do want us to look at, OK, if I had like type mark one as this bifold door, uh, if I go to my schedule, they want us to see how this updates automatically. So I'm going to double click door schedule, type mark one. That bifold, if we change it to a single flush, you'll see that update in the plan. Now it's a single flush door. And then I can also change it here and it'll update my schedule automatically. So everything uh, works out just fine. Um, when you uh, update something on your project, it'll update everything else that you made uh, going forward. All right. Now um, I just saved. I recommend you do the same. We're going to go and create a room schedule. They don't have us create a window schedule in this. Uh, over to uh, the architecture tab and I believe they have us start on floor 2 for this thing. So I'm going to go to entry level 2 and they want us to create a room tag but notice what happens. My room right here uh, also takes up the ceiling of the uh, double height lower level that exists right over here. So I need to draw a room separator right here around the stairs and the balcony uh, railing um, to tag just this space here that my mouse is going over. 
So I'm going to do room separator. I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to do this right on top of where the edge of the floor is, right here. I'm going to go to where the stairs land. I'm going to zoom in to that railing right over here. And then I'm going to dye that into the wall. Hit escape twice. Now when I go to my room tag, you'll see that it, it separates these two spaces. So this is room one. We're going to go clockwise, two, three. Hit escape. Then we're going to go to lower level, tag room. Uh, but notice now here it won't like recognize it. It says an X on this, so hit escape. Click on these walls here. And we need to make them room bounding. This usually uh, by default is checked, but since these are retaining walls, I think they by default are not. Uh, other walls typically are. And then I'm going to tag these rooms. So I'm going to go to room. Let's do the big one first. And then same thing, we're going to go clockwise around the sheet. Notice that, uh, I'm going to hit escape twice, that here my, I'm kind of conflicting. That's because we're at a 1 8 inch equals a foot scale. It's pretty small. We're going to change that to quarter inch equals a foot. So our plans got bigger. Our text stayed the same size, but relatively they look smaller uh, next to the plans. So I'm just going to nudge with the arrow keys um, these room tags over a little bit just so the numbers don't overlap so it's a little bit easier to read. And then I'm going to save my work as well. They just want us to change one of the windows. Oh, click once, click twice, click once, click twice. Okay, so they want two soft clicks and uh, they just want us to rename these tags so that way you can see that you can change the name of a tag. Um, and then one of the windows in the west wall. So up here, they want us to change this to say B. So we have windows A and Windows B. Um, I think they wanted us to do that to differentiate uh, letters for windows and numbers for doors. All right, so now that we have that, now we're ready to do the color-coded plan. Okay, so I switched back to lower level. I'm gonna go up to entry level. I'm gonna change this to also be a quarter scale. Now that I have that the same as level one, we always want our plans to all be uniform in scale. So that way it reads nicely when we print these out. Um, so now I have to change the room names. So going through these rooms, we're gonna name them just as I do here. So this room uh, at the entry level, this one here is gonna be called entry. And then this room down here it's going to be called store for like storage. This room here is going to be called bedroom. Lower level one. We have another bedroom. This room here is the bathroom. We have two storage closets, so store. Store, and then this one is living room. Okay, now that we have everything labeled, now our color scheme will work. So we have to go up to the graphics, and I'm gonna do that for entry level two to start. And under color scheme, where it says none, click on none. We're going to drop down to rooms, click on name, and now we have all of our rooms uh, by name. So all the storage, uh, we have all of the storage going to be colored the same. And then we just say apply and OK. And so now we have our rooms color coded. We're going to do the same thing for lower level one. So we go to color scheme, click on that, go down to rooms, name, and everything's already good. So say apply. And okay so now we have this guy color coded too and now from here we can drop in a legend so I believe that's under might be under annotate or it's under uh, let's see what the packet says here I can't remember
annotate tab, color fill. So annotate, and we have color fill. Color fill is Color fill panel, color fill legend. Oh, color fill legend right here. And then we just go and place this guy right on our sheets. We do the same here. Color fill legend, place that right on our sheet. And then from here, they ask us to crop our view so let's see show crop region and then what do they want us to do with that okay so they're just asking that we crop these views to get our elevation markers out so here what we're going to do is show the crop region with the light bulb, turn that light bulb on, click on your crop region, grab the blue grip edit, and drag that guy in, 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 and in, nice and tight. And then from here, what I suggest doing is turning off underlay if you had it on. So we're going to turn off the crop region, and then we're going to go to our project browser, and under um, underlay, we're going to change that to none and apply. That way we're just looking at level two. Same thing with lower level one. If you still have underlay on, I would turn that off to none, apply. And then with that, we're gonna show the crop region as well and bring it in nice and tight to our model. Make sure you don't crop out your uh, window tags or door tags. And then hide the crop box and save it. And now we're going to do our solar study. So this is the uh, step number 21. And in our 3D view, so we're going to go to 3D. I click on the little house. In our 3D view, find uh, a view that you like. And then I'm going to go to uh, sun path. Turn that on. So now we can uh, see the sun path. We have to specify a location. Um, so if we go up to sun settings, we can change our location. So I could type in weather, uh, oh, right here, under location, I'm going to drop that down. And we can change that to, like, let's say Chicago. And if you can't find it, you can go to default city list. Sometimes the connection's weird. And so you can just go down and you could find a uh, city that you want to use. And so what I say is Chicago here. Let's go to Chicago. It's going a little slow. There it is. Say OK. And then we're going to do the summer solstice in Chicago. And we'll do a single day. I think they ask for single day in these two. They, they do a one day solar study. Um, and yeah, they're asking for a summer solstice in this too. So this is fine. We can do. Uh, I think you can just click on the summer solstice solar study and it'll do it uh, for you already. So then there's a way to animate this and we can export that as an AVI file. So if we go to the view control bar, we can go to preview solar study um, through the sun path icon. So if we click on this sun path, let's make sure we have shadows on. Sun path icon right down here, preview solar study. And uh, it gives us a little bar up here. 
and we can hit play on that. Where's the play? Oh, right here. And so let's do that again. So it just gives us a little bit of a study of those shadows throughout the day. And obviously you can tweak this to whatever you desire. So if you want to show it from like an earlier time, uh, you should be able to edit that under the settings. And you could say, yeah, let's go from maybe 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Apply and OK. And then you can make a little bit of a longer solar study if you wish. And then from there, we can export um, a video file. So videos and animations. And you can do the solar study. And this will save it as an AVI file. And they want us to uh, make the frames per second at 1. So that way I think it's a pretty small file. And then what else do they want us to go? Shaded with edges for our style. That's good. I think everything else is OK. And you would just say OK. And this will save an AVI file. And that's a, just a little video file that you can then share with somebody. You can upload it, send an email, submit it to your teacher or anything uh, that you want to do. Submit it to your client. All right, don't forget to save and subscribe if you like the video. Give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.